William Jennings Bryan may be best known for his part in the Scopes Monkey Trial in defending creation against the lie of evolution. He defended creation valiantly, but Satan had his toehold in and um, the acceptance of evolution by the educational system has been as much a part of the uh, death of the American family way of life as has been feminism. But one thing perhaps you didn't know about William Jennings Bryan is that he ran for president um, <clears throat> and uh, I have an article here <clears throat> that was published on February 4th, 1920 and it is again from the American Lutheran Survey. And the title of it is, Brian is considered to be in the presidential running for a fourth time and his nomination is looked for by some. This article is an interesting bit of history. So I've decided that I would share it with those of you who um, are interested in presidential politics as, as I am historically. It's a, a fascinating subject. So without further comment from me, Brian is considered to be in the presidential running for a fourth time and his nomination is looked for by some. Among the newspaper correspondents and other special observers, there is an opinion prevalent that William Jennings Bryan may again become a candidate for the presidency at the hands of the Democratic National Convention, notwithstanding the unyielding opposition of many old-line political leaders. It is very clear that Bryan is stronger now as a presidential possibility than ever before during his three campaigns for the presidency. First, most of the things he uh, has advocated during the past 20 years have come into being and a majority of his policies have been enacted into law. Even the despised free silver issue has been revived with, to some extent by the favorable action already taken by Congress to prevent the private silversmiths from buying up the silver dollars and subsidiary coin for the purpose of melting and then molding into table service articles. So far, as the intrinsic value is concerned, the white metal does not equal the yellow one, but the parity between gold and silver is maintained and the paper representative um, money used in place of silver is just as good as gold certificates are. We never see much metallic money now anyways, which is due to the Federal Reserve Bank uh, organizations conceded to be one of the best and safest financial institutions in the world. Ryan supported that measure along with the Federal Farm Loan Act, which, by the way, is going to remain on the books, although an attempt was made a few months ago to abolish the board that administers the law. To the following, in addition to the financial measures we will refer to in passing, or let us say in making up the points which seem to be conceded as Brian's strongest attributes, one, the election of U.S. senators by direct vote of the people. For 15 years, that was a hard and knotty question to determine. The Senate itself was for years strongly opposed uh, to it as uh, contrary to the principles of the Constitution. But the sentiment of the people became stronger and stronger until the constitutional amendment was indeed adopted. Number two, postal savings banks, for, of which we hear but little, but the institution is of great benefit and convenience to the small savings and working class people. And three, universal suffrage, which has been a burning question for more than 50 years and which has, according to Mr. Bryan and other prominent men in the all political parties, resulted in. An illustration, as an illustration of this claim, we will cite an occurrence that took place at the Jackson Day Banquet in Washington. Several women delegates, or representatives of different women's political organizations, accepted invitations. One of them delivered a short speech, which was well received, although she did not refer to women suffrage as, or prohibition. Mr. Bryan was the next speaker after the lady had taken her seat, and he soon launched out into a great uh, changes that the country is experiencing as a result of women's suffrage and prohibition. Immediately, he mentioned prohibition and declared that John Barleycorn had been put out of business. 
There were cries from different tables of the banqueters of, Oh, cut that out. Give us a rest on that, etc., etc. After waiting for the confusion to subside, Mr. Bryan made this statement. When the very sensible and practical views, as expressed by the eloquent lady who spoke a moment or two ago, failed to arouse any enthusiasm, how can I be expected to pass by old John Barleycorn, which the women have helped so effectively to put out of business? Many and many is the time I have addressed gatherings like this and have often appealed to Philip Drunk, but at, the, at last the day has come when I can appeal to Philip Sober. Whether he finds that occasion altogether agreeable or not on such an occasion as this. This sally set both the men and women to laughing, <laughs> and from time to time on, Brian had the entire audience with him. Brian's strongest claim for popular approval, however, should be his drawing up, supporting, and forcing, uh, forcing through, excuse me, while he was Secretary of State, of the 30 peace treaties with 30 prominent foreign nations. The gist of this series of treaties was that the United States and the foreign nations agreed not to wage war upon each other or on any consideration whatsoever until 12 months had elapsed for thorough discussion of misunderstandings, and Germany and Austria refused to become parties to this agreement. No big surprise there. Some politicians think that Brian is a dark horse candidate this year, but he has announced both privately and in public that if he decides to become a candidate, he will let the people know. It is probable that he would not announce himself until shortly before the convention meets, unless there were other political um, doings like the recent uh, inauguration of Governor George Edwards of uh, the new executive of New Jersey, um, who is known as the champion of uh, return of John Barleycorn or the repeal of prohibition. If there should happen to develop anything like an organized movement in behalf of the late lamented John, Bryan has told some of his friends in Washington that he would have a public announcement to make. And the chances are very remote that the liquor interest will take much of a hand in this year's campaign, although it is asserted that the wets are booming Governor Edwards for the presidency and will have quite a large available fund for the purpose of forwarding his political fortunes. So as of the writing of this particular article in 1920, uh, the field for the presidency or um, nominees to run for the presidency um, appeared to be between uh, against Wood in Republican circles and Bryan against the field in the Democratic situation. An interesting article, because uh, William Jennings Bryan, um, though he never attained the presidency, of course, was an extremely fascinating individual, and he was very involved in, in uh, the formation of the political arena in his day. All right, hope you enjoyed this brief article, and uh, thanks for stopping by and taking a listen.